this video is the third year seven game design lesson. Now what we're going to look at today is we're going to try and have a look to see if we can program levels in our game and also understand how the broadcast script works. And what I want us to be able to do is have an end of level item um, at the end of our first level which when collected moves us on to a second level. Okay, so imagine that you've got a one level game where you move around and you collect coins. And as you collect those coins, a score goes up by one each time. What do we want to happen? Well, once we've collected all the coins, what we want is an end of level object to appear. And then when, let's say, imagine we created a key to be our end of level object. When that key is touched by the main character, then what we want is the key to disappear and the next level to load. Now how can we do this? Well, let's have a look at the theory first of all and then I'll demonstrate this in Scratch. So the first thing we need to do is we want to create a new background. Because really in Scratch, a level is just a different background. So to do that, we can go to the stage. We can then start to draw our background for our second level. Now in this case I've got two backgrounds. I've got backdrop 1 which is blue and backdrop um, 2 which is green but obviously you would spend time creating different worlds for those different levels perhaps um, with your amazing art skills. Now I'll demonstrate this um, all at the end. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create this end of level scoring item. So I'm going to choose a sprite and I'm going to choose a key, so I'm going to choose one of the ready-made ones, and I'm going to select the key. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to program the key. Now what I want to happen is this, I want the key to be hidden when we start the game. So as you can see here in, this, in the uh, presentation, when I click the green flag, I'm programming it to hide right at the start. Then what I want is the program to constantly check to see what the score is. And the moment that the score is 10, I want the key to then be shown. So it appears perhaps after 10 um, items are collected. What I then need to do is program the key a little bit more. So once it shows at the end, I then need to program it so that it can sense when it's being um, touched by the main character. So I need a second script. And it's going to say something along the lines of whenever it's touched by the main character, I want the key to hide, I want this score to go up by one, and then this is something new, I'm going to broadcast a message. Now we haven't done broadcast uh, scripts before, but everything so far should make sense. But let's think about this broadcast script. So the score goes up by one, the door hide, or the key hides, sorry, um, and we broadcast a message. Now what is a broadcast script? Well. A broadcast, you can think of this as a person inside um, the program. Now he or she shouts a message out to the rest of the scripts in the program when the broadcast script is run. So if you've got a script somewhere else in your program that, um, start, that, that you want to work or run when that broadcast happens, what you can do is you can use a when I receive little hat script to start off that script. So here you can see that level two is being broadcast. So imagine that someone's shouting out level two in your program. Somewhere else in your program, you might have a script that says when I receive level two. And then the scripts that are attached to that would then run at that moment in time. So the script isn't active when the game begins. It only becomes active when the broadcast level two is run. So then what we need to do is we need to program the stage or the backgrounds to change. And it's really simple. At the start of our game, we want backdrop one. So we say when the green flag is clicked, switch backdrop to backdrop one. And then when level two is received, so when that broadcast takes place, when the key is um, collected by the main character, we then want to switch the backdrop to backdrop two. And there's not a lot more to it than that. So we'll have a little look at how that actually um, can be programmed in Scratch. Okay, so here's a Scratch game that I've uh, made um, over the last couple of lessons. 
and if I click the green flag my cat can go around and can collect these items and at the moment the top score is six because I've got six of those items um, present and they appear at the start of the game and so on and so forth so let's try and program um, a new level so as I said before a new level is simply another backdrop so at the moment if I go to stage and backdrops and I go to backdrops here you can see that I've got one background so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a new backdrop and this is called backdrop 2 at the moment it's white let's make it a green color and let's very quickly just draw a rectangle on the stage like so so there's level two so I've got level one and level two obviously you would create high quality um, backdrops um, different worlds maybe for different levels so the next thing I need to do now that I've got my two backgrounds um, ready to be programmed I now am going to create this end of level item so I'm going to go to choose a sprite and I'm going to find a key which should be down here on the right hand side somewhere I'm going to select my key and what I want this key to do is I want it to be hidden at the start of the game so I'm going to immediately program that so I'm going to say that when I click the green flag I want my key to be hidden and then what I want it to do is I want the program to constantly check to see what the score is and I want it to appear at the end of the level so in my example here I've got six coins so when the score reaches six that's when the level ends and that's when I want this key to appear so I'm going to have a forever loop inside I'm going to have an if statement so it's going to check the condition and the condition that it's going to check is to see whether the score is six and the moment that the score becomes six, I'm going to make the key show. So let's program that. Click the green flag. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the key appears. So I now need to program the key a little bit more. I want the key to be able to interact with the cat. So I'm going to use another forever loop inside that I'm going to have another condition and the condition is going to be or this script is only going to run if it is touched by the cat now the cat is sprite one I can see that down here that's the name of the of the cat so whenever it's touched by sprite one what I want to happen is I want the key to hide there we go now, I'm also going to change the score by one. Now, some people might not understand why I want to do that. So let me explain. When the score is six, the key shows. When the cat touches the key, it hides. But the score is still six, so it will show. But then the cat's touching it, so it will hide. But the score's still six, so the key will show and so on and so forth and what you end up doing is getting into a, a an infinite loop where the key just flashes because it's constantly being touched by the cat and being asked to hide but the score is still six so it keeps trying to show so if we change the score up by one it just means that that loop will not happen and then the last thing I've got to do is I need to broadcast a message now I'm going to broadcast the message level two now you would write uh, click on new message and you would write in whatever message you want but because I've had a little practice already, level two is still there. So I'm just going to keep using that particular message. So now when I click the green flag, now I'm over those coins at the moment. Let's move away and click the green flag again. Here we go. So I've got my six coins. I go one, two, three, four, five, six. The key is shown. And look at the score. The score should go up to seven and the key should um, hide when I touch it. And you can see that happens. Now. At the moment, you can see that actually it's immediately gone on to this green background. Now that is because I've been a little bit silly and I have um, kept some scripts from when I was uh, practicing this little um, bit of coding a few moments ago. 
So let's just remove those two and let's go back to backdrop one and let's just repeat the same process so that hopefully you see it all being programmed in front of your eyes. So this is where we were at, collecting the scripts, one, two, uh, collecting the coins even, one, two, three, four, five, six, the coin appears, it then disappears and the score goes up to seven. Perfect. So the last thing we now need to do, now that we've got this broadcast script, which is being broadcast when the, uh, the key is being collected, I need to go over to my stage, going to go over to the backdrops, and I now need to program these so that when the game starts, I go to backdrop one, and when the broadcast happens, I go to backdrop two. So when the game starts, well, we click the green flag to start the game. So I'm going to go to looks, and I'm going to go to switch to backdrop one. And then I'm going to go to events, and I'm going to say that when the stage receives that broadcast, it's going to switch to backdrop two. And now my game should be fully working. So I click the green flag. I'm on blue background. That's background one. That therefore is level one. I collect my coins. The key appears and I'm immediately on to level two. Now, some people at this point would then go, OK, so this is a little extension. Uh, some people might say, OK, how can I get some scoring items on my second level? Well, the way to do that is to produce new scoring items. So I'm going to go and paint a new item. And let's see, what shall I draw? Let's draw a red apple. So there's a little circle. Let's draw a little stalk. There we go, an incredible apple. Why, well, thank you very much. Okay, so I've got my apple. Now, remember, I don't want these, these second level scoring items to appear on the screen at the start of the game. I only want it, them to appear when we go onto the second level. So the way to do that is to make sure that when we start the game, we hide the apple. And when we receive level two, we make the apple show. So now when I click the green flag, I'm on level one. I collect my items like so. I collect the key. I want a level two. And then my second level item now appears. Now I could duplicate that several times. So I've got new items for my second level. But remember, if you want them to interact with the cat and the scores to go up by one each time they're collected, Remember, you still need to program them like before. So you would need to use a script similar to the coin script. You wouldn't want them to show when the green flag is clicked, but what you would want them to do is you'd want the apple to forever check if it's been touched by the cat, to hide when it is, and to change the score by one. So I could, if I wanted to, drag that into there. I'll put that script back to normal. If I go to the um, apple, oh, I didn't go in. Let's try that again. That's not liking that at all, is it? Well, in that case, I'm going to have to build it all myself. So I'm going to say that when, in fact, I could do it just here, when level two um, broadcast occurs, make the apple show forever, check to see if it is touched by the cat. If it is touched by the cat, then change the score by one and make the cat hide. I could now duplicate this several times. And I've now got my second level ready to go where I can collect these particular red apples. So level one, get the key. I'm on level two and you can see the score is continuing to go up. And if you wanted level three, repeat the process again. 
So have a go at creating a level in your Scratch game.